What's up, my miners of intelligence and consciousness? I'm Rick Brooks, and this is Rick's Mind. Today I sit down with Rick Givanetti, who is a whiskey connoisseur. We sit down and we talk about whiskey and sports and all things. Enjoy. Rick motherfucking Giovanetti, man. What's up, dude? Thanks for doing this. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. <clears throat> dude, so I got I have a mess of questions. I, I've been following you for a while, and I am kind of a novice at the whiskey game. And I love your little quick, like this whiskey's good, or this whiskey's overrated. And I do have a bone to pick with you on that. And that is like I think Buffalo Trace is, is underrated, dog. And I'm pretty sure you said it was overrated. And I was very hurt. Uh, it depends on where you live. That's the key. Ooh, really? Yes. If you live in Ohio, we can no longer get Buffalo Trace like we used to be able to get. It used to sit on the shelf, always available. And now people hunt for it. And you can never find it. Oh, fuck. Really? I had no idea. Yeah. So I live in Ohio, right next to Kentucky. And there's no Buffalo Trace, even though it's made four hours from where I live. The, this is a travesty. Yeah, that is. So what, what do you think is the cause of this? So the state of Ohio is a state, uh, has a state liquor agency. So they run the liquor board and they make the deals and say, hey, you get this, you get that. And all of a sudden I started collecting whiskey probably seven, eight years ago. And Buffalo Trace is my first bottle I ever had. Loved it. A friend brought it over and it started the passion and it was always available. It was on the shelf. I could go get it Monday, Friday, Sunday. Didn't matter. It was always there. And then now it's become popular and the state has allocated it and said, Hey, now you only get X amount of bottles. <laughs> so, like I go to my liquor store. I, I know the guy I've gotten to know him. He used to be my landlord. And I go in there and I'm like, Hey, what's going on? And he saves me a bottle. But he's like, yeah, we opened up at nine on Monday and there was a line of 15 people because they heard we had Buffalo Trace. Oh my Are you God. kidding? So Jeez. beef with Buffalo Trace. I love it. I just got a bottle. I got a huge one while I was in Michigan. It was 50 bucks. I got the huge one. It was available. <laughs> in Ohio, though, I can't get it. And I live here. That's that's ridiculous, dude. Well, don't worry. I'll I'll send you out some. I have no problems getting Buffalo Trace out here. To be honest, I'm 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 new to the I'm new to the whiskey game. Like, um, the way my palate works is I, I'm more of a, a, a I like bourbons, right? Like I like kind of the the the, the sweetie, like kind of a little bit sweeter of a taste. I, I like some some Canadian whiskeys, uh, and and then another one lately. It's not Whistle Pig. It's it's the Petey whiskeys that I've okay. started like, to like, so and almost. yeah, yeah, and it's and it's 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 like a love hate because <laughs> it's such a unique flavor that I hated at first, and then as you, I mean, as you drink a little bit more of it, you're like, what what the fuck is like? This isn't that bad. I kind of like you kind of get a little taste for it because I can never. It's like a, I I kind of equate it to. I'm a big beer connoisseur, right? Or, okay. um, Belgian beers, right? Like I, the first, I had a Francis Connor, and it was that weird wheat, like that wheat weedy taste. I I kind of hated it, and then like six months later, I was like, man, I really, what is this taste that I have rattling yeah. around in my brain? And I had to have it, and then ever since then, I've been on the Belgian Belgian yeah. ale train. Man, I started with Scotch originally, and Scotch Whoa. is traditionally very peaty. Mm -hmm. At first, I said it tastes like Christmas trees. Like if you took a pine tree and started chewing on it, that's what a peaty whiskey tastes like to me. And I started with scotch. I've got I've got a hundred bottles of scotch back here that I don't even touch anymore because I'm so into bourbon right now. And that flavor profile is just totally zapped my need for peat. I just don't want it. You don't want it. You could be kind of burned yourself out of the peatiness of it all. Yeah. I'd have to take a break from whis American whiskey for a while and then go back to scotch, and then I'd really start to enjoy it again. Mm -hmm. But at first taste, you're like, ooh, what is that? And then you realize, all right, it's not that bad. You know, <laughs> and you're like, okay. Then yeah. you go the next day and the next day for sure. Dude, that that is uh, that's very interesting. I, I've never so what what um kinds of bourbons are you drinking um the majority of? Oh, so God, there's so many, but what I've switched to for the most part is like a craft, a craft distiller. So we're not talking about Jack Daniels or Buffalo Trace or uh, Jim Beam, even though I posted a Jim Beam video tonight of underrated whiskey. Um, but so craft distillers, people that are, you know, you want to open a whiskey company, 
it takes you four years to make something. So a lot of these people are coming up with a mash bill that they really like, and they're getting it bottled by a company in Indiana called MGP. And MGP is like the secret that's coming out and becoming public now where let's say we started a whiskey company tomorrow. We don't have a product. We have nothing. So we'd start our label. We call MGP and we say, hey, this is our flavor profile. Can we try some whiskey that you have on the shelves? And then they'll private label bottle our stuff for us. And then when our stuff comes to age, we can either stay with MGP or we can make our own batch. So long story short, what I'm into right now is Pinhook. Pinhook, Pinhook. it's incredible. So I would, I would write these down and I'm going to give you, I shouldn't tell anybody, but I'm going to, I've already done it once. Pinhook is a really cool company. So the two things they're doing right now, they're making a whiskey called a vertical series. Now I have no tie to Pinhook. I don't have any ties to any whiskey companies. I'm just a guy that likes whiskey, started collecting and just, it kind of exploded from there. But what Pinhook does, they, they barreled up all of their rye and whiskey. Oh, they're all their rye and their bourbon a couple years ago. And they have all the batches stored away. And every year they're releasing a new batch from the same original barreling. Oh, shit. Progression every single year. And so right now they're on year five of their bourbon and their rye. And it's just mind blowing how much better it gets year by year. And they're going to go all the way to year 12. Oh, buddy. So it's going to be killer. In a, it's killer right now. But in a couple of years, it's gonna just it's gonna rock your face. It's so and, good, and it's gonna be and it's and I'm a, I've never heard of it. Is it like a mid shelf bottle, low shelf? Like what's going on? So Pinhook right now is probably forty to sixty bucks, depending on what you're buying. Um, it could get a little pricier as you get into their vertical line. But what's cool about it, if you go on their website, they have an they have a app that they partner with called Breeze. So you set up an account with Breeze, and they just text you, "Hey, do you want a bottle? We've got a new one," and you just say, "Yeah." And then they send the bottle to your house. It's the stupidest thing I've ever. I'm like, <laughs> everybody do this. <laughs> this brilliant. Yeah, That's brilliant. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'll text them. Like, sure. I'm like, hey. And they're like, hey, give us your credit card. And I'm like, all right. If they burn my credit card, like whatever, I'll just cancel it. And then the guy was like, hey, do you, we have these bottles. What do you want? We'll check the inventory. So you text them. Okay, what do you have? They tell you. And then you say, sure. And they send it to your house. And they've got these, if you guys can see behind me, these colorful tops. Yeah. Those are the pinhook releases. So they all have a different colored top and they have a horse name to them. So that you know which bottles are which when you get them. But yeah, it's wild. They You just text them. And they're like, yeah, is your card on file still good? Absolutely. Okay. See you in seven days. You'll get a new bottle at your door. Oh my God, dude. That, I had no idea. Well, it's it, honestly, I love people that are passionate and you're a whiskey fanatic and I am. Yeah, I'm just entering into this world. I'm I'm all I'm all, I'm all I'm a man of scenes. I like scenes. Yeah, and um, I definitely on the bucket list is to take a trip out to Kentucky and and do a a, a whiskey tour. I've done I've done a cognac. I was I went through a cognac phase like in college, and I what? went to uh, oh my goodness Burgundy, France, and uh, fucking went through a lot of like. Yeah, Burgundy distilleries. I went to the Hennessy yeah. factory. It was awesome, man. Nice. It was awesome. Yeah, those distilleries are so cool. And the the thing about bourbon is it's constantly changing. And I say, I've been saying whiskey in all my videos, just because whiskey is every bourbon is a whiskey, but not every whiskey is a bourbon. So people are getting a little bit butt hurt, like always oh, calling it whiskey and it's bourbon. It's all under the same family. It comes. Yeah. But the, the thing, it, it's so it's changing so fast. So many companies are growing and there's so many good bottles that it's a never ending rabbit hole and you can't ever get to the bottom of it. No. But, cool. Yeah. What I, and that's what I kind of love about it, too. And and also there's also weird things. DeMarc, I'll have you look something up because I don't remember. Maybe you remember. There is a I believe it's a whiskey that was made by the army or something like that. That's really not good. And it's super hard to find, and people want it now. But I do not remember the name. Do you know what I'm kind of talking about? <clears throat> I think I found it. Is it Horse Soldier Bourbon? No, no, okay. it doesn't sound I'll familiar. Keep, you're I'll you're going on a wild on. goose chase. It's it's like old. Maybe it maybe it's made by Wait, the U, U. the military special. Yep, here it is. The U.S. Armed Forces own bourbon. What is it? Uh, Good call. It's called uh, Military Special. 
Uh, created da, 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 80 proof three year old straight bourbon whiskey. Yeah. It's and it's, like all, it's a, only sold in, in uh, PXs. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, oh. it's hard to find and people are all, it tastes like dot horse piss and it, it's not good, but everyone's like, it's hard to get. I got to get it. You know, dude, that's, that's bourbon these days. That's everything is hard to get. Everybody wants the most popular bottle. No, do you got, so what's the last bourbon you drank? Do you have any bourbon right now or whiskey? I've got Russell's reserve oh. Kentucky straight bourbon. Is that the 10 year? Is that the red bottle? This is the 10 year. Yeah. yeah. Right here. Got it. We could drink it together. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm off. I'm I'm on a like a little no drinking thing. Otherwise, I. Totally oh, are you doing the hard seventy five? I was yeah. following your your page. Yeah, no, I'm doing like a hard ninety two. I made it up. Your own kind of blend of hard seventy five. Yeah, 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 exactly, dude. And then we, <laughs> and then I got a um, Redwood Empire Pipe so Dream That's Bourbon fantastic. Whiskey. That's really good, and that's made out by you, I believe. You're in Oregon, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, that's sir. Made somewhere by you, I believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, it smells good. It smells real good, John. Yeah. So uh, I too love whiskey and started with Scotch, um, but I have my kind of old standard. Well, Bullet perfect. Bullet Bourbon. I really love their rye a lot too. Oh, well, Bullet Rye is fantastic. Um, I have this one. I just got. This is actually really good. Uh, it's Ooh. uh. Portland, Ooh. let's see, it's, uh, it's a Burnside aged rye from a distillery in Portland. See, that's the cool thing that like anybody can make a bourbon whiskey right now. So like you've got whiskey in Portland. Yeah, there's a and there's no- a distillery here where I live in Corvallis or they're in Corvallis or they're in the town next to us that's called Four, uh, Four Spirits that it's a veteran and he started making. He could he didn't call it bourbon, but it just it's just corn whiskey. Um, yeah. But it's pretty. I've bought it before. It's really good, and they've expanded. They make tons of stuff now. Yeah, and once you find a flavor profile you like, and you hear friends talking about other bottles, you just want to go explore and find them. And that's how I got. I have so currently, I have three hundred and five bottles. Wow, two hundred and seventy-five are open. <laughs> well, yeah, my rule is if I buy it, unless it's a backup, it gets opened. It gets opened. It gets shared. Friends come over. We drink it. We have a little bourbon club where we'll have some friends over and we'll drink two bottles and we'll blind taste test and we'll see if, you know, do we really think that Weller is better than Michter's? Well, we'll find out because we'll drink it blind and we'll kind of have a talk about it. And it's a cool way to get rid of your bias when you're drinking with you. Yeah. Do you have any, have you tried, is it Green Spot? Green Spot. Irish whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Fan? Uh, I'm not huge into Irish whiskey right now. It's the the one I probably have like four or five bottles of, mm-hmm. but that's the one I'm missing. That's my next venture is Irish whiskeys and Japanese whiskey. Yeah, I was I was just gonna get to the um, the Japanese whiskey because they they are tearing up the market from what I understand. This, this bottle Yamazaki Twelve used to be like. Everyone's like, oh, it's good. It was a hundred bucks. Now you can never find this. No one's got it. And it's like 400 bucks now. Wow. And it's, it's really good. It's worth the hype at a hundred bucks, but not at 400 bucks. You, that's another strange thing about this whole little whiskey world. You can pay as much money as you want for a bottle. Yeah. And I refuse to pay over like maybe 50% over retail is as high as I'll go. Yeah. Everything else, everything I have is either at retail or a little bit above. Uh, and I travel a lot. So I'll go to Kentucky. I'll go to Michigan. My honeymoon, I we went to California and I actually had to buy a new suitcase because I brought home 15 bottles. <laughs> <laughs> at TSA with like fragile stickers all over it. I bought bubble wrap. My wife was like, really? I'm like, don't worry, honey. It's worth it. Because I can't. <laughs> buy Can you, have you tried, um, like I think it's Screwball Whiskey in San Diego. I went to their distillery. I mean, that's it's like a peanut, but it's I don't, know, one, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you can call like that whiskey. Across from me, I'm staring at it right now. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. You know, it's but I don't know if that's like is that technically a whiskey, man? It's I mean, it's made as a whiskey, and then they add flavoring to it. So I'm, I mean, the number one. This I mean, we may need to fact check this, but my. Um, my liquor store guy told me that their number one selling product last year was crown apple. 
and Crown Peach. And they were the, probably the two most sold products in the country. I believe I'll it. Hold a bottle of either. I'm not a huge fan. I, I prefer it straight up, but yeah, I I believe it. And and that was like going back to college. I used to do you know Fireball. Like that was oh. like, man, a Fireball. I'm such a badass. Oh God, cinnamon whiskey kills me. I can't, <laughs> I can't even smell it anymore. I fucking love it. <laughs> What's up? So according to let's see, this is uh, the spirit business. The top ten selling spirits last year. Uh, was Jinro, which is a Korean uh, soju, uh, White Claws, McDowell's number one whiskey, which sounds like something from an Eddie Murphy movie. Yeah, uh, it does. A lot of that. it, and then uh, yeah, Smirnoff Pink Rose, Imperial Blue whiskey, uh, Officer's Choice. A lot of like Korean and Japanese stuff, surprisingly. And Royal so is, Royal Stag was another. Is this in the United States, or is it, are you pulling this from World? The world, um, because I, I mean, believe should, this is the United States. D- double check that. I will look into that. So it might have been Ohio then that was the Crown Apple, but that's what they do in Ohio too. Is if you own a liquor store, they tell you you've got to take X amount of cases of Jack and Jim and Crown in order to get the ability to try and sell Buffalo Trace and Blantons and stuff like that. Wait, why? Do you know why? The state of Ohio that they they're the ones that dictate. If you're in a state-run liquor state like we are, the state makes the deals. So if you go to Kentucky, you can get a store pick, which means the guys from the store went to, say, New Riff, which is a distillery. You can try a barrel and you can say, hey, this is a bottle we want. Can we put our label on it? In Ohio, the state makes the picks. Stores can't make their own picks. Oh, dude, that fucking sucks, man. It does. The only good thing is is that the prices are set, so they can't jack up your price. So it's the give and take. Do I do I want to get screwed because I can't get a lot of stuff, or do I am I okay because the price is always the same price? Yeah, I mean Oregon, we have the OLCC, so the state controls our liquor. I mean, again, everything that we're talking about right now, I'm an idiot. I have no idea. I'm a very small novice. Most of the whiskey that I own is my friends gifting me bottles because they want me desperately to get into into this debauchery with them. Hey, I'm an idiot too. I'm not a bourbon. I'm just a bourbon guy in my spare time. I'm a salesman. I know you're a salesman. I was listening to your first podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a salesman and a baseball coach in my real life. And in my my fun private life, I'm a, I'm a bourbon guy, and I've just learned all on my own, and just talked to people, and started an Instagram, and started drinking stuff, and tasting it. And I keep a notebook. I got two different notebooks. I keep one where I write my own notes, and then I have this one called a uh, a whiskey tasting doodle book. And what this is, when you open up to a blank page, it gives you all these options like what does it look like, what color is it, what's the flavor profile. Wow. So you kind of drink it, you sit by yourself, you drink, and then you kind of fill it out as you go along, and you kind of kind of really learn, uh, you know, what's what a whiskey tastes like, and you can kind of learn those profiles. Yeah, where did you get that book? At? We'll put the link in the show notes. It was from Etsy, and I can email it to you guys when I when, I, when we're done and I find the link for it. Uh, this was this might have been Etsy or uh, Pinterest. I think my wife got it for me, and uh, it's just really cool to sit with a bottle. Like, and the best way to do it when you want to really want to learn the way I do it, uh, I'll find some time where I have 30 minutes to myself. Um, I won't have any candy or chocolate and I'll kind of clear my palate. I'll sit with a glass and I'll drink it and smell it and taste it and fill out my little book here. And then at the end of it, it's like, okay, well, interesting. I had a, you know, it, it smelled like popcorn or it tasted like peanut butter, where if you just drink it and you're talking to friends, you don't really understand what it tastes like. You just kind of know you like it. Mm-hmm. So the doodle book really helped and it's called the whiskey tasting doodle book. I wish they would call it something different than doodle, but <laughs> yeah, well you should make your own. I've thought about that. And I think in my search for making my own, I found this one. So it's kind of like a first good prototype to see. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some stuff in here that I don't really care for. Like this one says the balance. Is it not balanced, balanced? Is it harmonious or is it complex? I, that's a hard question. Like, I think a complex whiskey is balanced, you know? Yeah. So, but it's all interpretive. It's all up to you. There's no, there's no end all be all on that. It's you like what you like. And in, as long as you share it with friends and you don't trash things you don't like, just don't drink the stuff you don't like. 
Yes, I, I agree. And what have you seen that documentary on? Um, oh no, Demarco, get ready to Google dog because I don't remember. It's, it's a documentary on whiskey, and they did. Uh, man, I cannot remember the name of it. It's gone. It's not going to come to me. That's all you get, dude. You're going to have to Google it. It's about stealing whiskey or how whiskey is made? It's about how whiskey is made. They go to different distilleries. I think I found it. Is it called Neat? Neat. Thank you. Hulu. Yeah. Nice job. Thank you. I'm good at what I do. (laughs) So, yeah, Neat. Have you seen that? I have. Oh, dude. I love that shit. uh, That's what kind of made me fall in love with Buffalo Trace. I was just like, man, I had no idea. That, That distillery is older than America. Yeah. Buffalo Trace is super old, uh, but it's become... And then they bought a bunch of people. Well, it's mm-hmm. not even Buffalo Trace anymore. It's called Buffalo Trace on the outside, but Sazerac is the one that owns Buffalo Trace now. I'm pretty positive. Okay. And they've, bought, they've bought the Pappy line. They've bought the Weller lines. They've bought Buffalo Trace lines. So it's all under one family now. And they've got arguably the best, most famous whiskeys in America and in the world under one family name. And that's why it's become such a like a, a monster in the market. Yeah. Pappy Van Winkle, man, that stuff's expensive. I've never even I've seen a bottle in California, a couple. I've never seen one in Ohio. It's so expensive. I mean, you could spend three thousand dollars for a bottle. Yeah. Jeez. I, I I can't no way would I ever I mean I saw I looked at it, I was at a shop, we were outside of San Francisco, and I walked in and I'm like, wow, they got Pappy. And I saw the tag and it said three thousand dollars. <laughs> I just turned around. Like, Never mind. I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, dude, I didn't know. I mean, if the podcast gets huge, who knows? Maybe I'll I'll get whiskey sent to me and I'll send it to you. I'll fly out here and we could we could just have a sampling of all the stuff. Absolutely. Hey, when you're done with uh, when you're done with your your hard 92, whatever you're doing, I'll yeah. send you samples. I'll label them, send them out to you. And you guys can try them and we could drink them again and say, hey, what, what do you think about this one? Oh, no, 100%, man. And the funny thing is, one of my best friends, he's been on the podcast, he lives in Toledo. So, okay. I mean, I, that's, I, I'll get out to see him this fall. So, we'll definitely meet up, dude. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll share a, share sure. a few glasses of, of the, of the, of the nectar of the gods, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Do you drink, um, anything else? You drink, are you a big beer guy or? Uh, I'm not huge in, I drink beer, but I don't drink a ton of craft beers. Um, IPA is not my style. Uh, I'm more of a lager, a lager guy, a uh, a, like uh, an amber ale. But Mm -hmm. I tried. I've gotten into some IPAs, but it just tastes too. That bitterness that it leaves in your mouth afterwards is so different from like drinking whiskey that it's kind of hard to tolerate. I'd have to like take some time away and really get into it to drink a lot of beer. Yeah, it's that I and I that's my that's my crutch. I love beer. Yeah. Um and I think that I mean not that any of it's healthy, but it, it there's a li- little bit less calories, right, in the brown stuff. So little, yeah, especially if you're mix, drinking it neat and <sighs> without diet coke inside of it or something like that. Exactly. I got and I would only want to drink it neat cuz it's art, man. It's art. It's bottled yeah. up art and I I definitely am getting to the point where I appreciate it. And I think that there's nothing more relaxing than having a glass of whiskey and a big fatty cigar. Yeah. Having a great cigar, smoking a whiskey, <laughs> having a cigar, smoking a whiskey, drinking <laughs> whiskey. <laughs> hey, maybe we can start smoking whiskey. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I, I have a nice little porch outside and all the friends over or I'll sit outside with my wife and she'll have wine and I'll just smoke a nice cigar, drink some whiskey and just kind of kick back and wait for the day tomorrow to start, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm I'm with you there. There's something like that, man. Especially What's your favorite beer right now. That's a good question. That's a real good question. I have to think about it. Give me um give probably time. probably Fort George. I think the brewery Fort George and I think their Vortex IPA is money. But I mean, I like Saisons. I like Belgiums. I'm out here. There's this huge push on hazy IPAs and I'm fucking over it. Like you over I'm, the hazy. Yeah. I'm over the hazy. Let's get into Saisons and Belgium beers. And there's a brewery um, in Bend um, that they, 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 
specialized in making Belgian beers. And I can't, let me pull up Belgian. I can't, my brain's shit today. Sorry. I, I, on that, on that note, I just, isn't it crux? No, it's not crux. Not crux, crux is a great, great brewery. Extremely too. good. Yeah. I'll yeah, look it up. Incredible brewery. Um, but yeah, I, I'm in the middle of like switching careers right now. So I've been like negotiating and whatnot. And, and so, oh. And that careers or switching jobs, switching jobs and careers. I'm going into a new industry. Okay. Yeah, got to get into the software sales, right? Okay. Yes. Was that? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Monkless Belgian Ales. Monk- Monkless. Yes. I. That's. You know, I'm going to take everything. Monkless is my brewery. I, I'm. I've never left the Belgian train. I, I love that. There's nothing like a good Belgian ale. I'm writing these down. So the. The Fort George Vortex IPA is that like a super IPA or is it that is that is I would <clears throat> I would have you back off that one right okay. like I wouldn't go straight for that. Have you tried many Belgian beers? I do like Belgian beer. Okay, well you would like Mon- Monkless has some pretty heavy hitters. Like, will you pull read some of the beers, Demarco? No, he'll he'll find some of the beers and I'll be able to tell you which ones nice. you would enjoy. Because I'll always try a new beer, a new drink. Um, yeah, the the Vortex IPA. If it's a super IPA, I'm out because I'll just waste it. I'm like, ah, that's yeah. yeah. All right, so we've got <clears throat> a Peppercorn Imperial Wit. That's a uh, fucking bomb one. The Sheppel Kufkin. Uh, it's a hard saying yet easy drinking. Uh, uh, don't know. Oh, it it sounds like a pretty typical Belgian spiced beer with like orange orange peel and whatnot. That one's money too. Uh, the Golden Ale called Restitution. Money. Uh, capitulation is a dry hop triple. He would and probably like that. That one, I uh, dry hop uh, triples would be good. And then uh, a a dark beer, a Belgian dark, is uh, called Meet Your Maker. And then That's a- there's the Trinity, which is also a triple. Uh, double or nothing is a is a double. And then let's see, poor poor pitiful me is a quadruple. Uh, Brothers beer is a single ale. And then they have some seasonals. Uh, there's Four Devils, which is a golden ale, a Curtain Closer, which is a quintuple, and Friars Festivus, which is a winter ale. So the, the, the Imperial Wit is one you'll have to try because that's got, I think that's like seven and a half, maybe even 8% ABV. It is, it's delicious. And I think you would enjoy that. Right, so. that's a good. Well, I mean, while we're on the subject, I've got my. What are some delicious bourbons that I should buy for my for my small small collection? So first, I would start with Pinhook. Anything that Pinhook offers is really really good. But look for their vertical series in bourbon and rye. Um, that's really good. Other ones that I give me one sec. I've got them behind me. I was using the other day. Hey, no worries, man. Uh, you guys ever heard of New Riff? No, I have not. So New Riff is a company, uh, I believe they're in, I think they're in Kentucky or Indiana, or they bottle in Indiana. Um, but this is a company that's really good. They've got um, a bourbon and a rye. They've got a regular bourbon, a regular rye, and then they have single barrels, which are released regularly. This is this rye, their single barrel rye is killer. It's like 50 bucks. Um, if you can find it, it's different because you guys are on the West Coast up mm-hmm. in the Northwest. So you guys get a little different stuff than the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were in California, it'd be all over the place. But um, New Riff is a fantastic up and coming company. Their stuff is really, really good. And I'm on a big one right now called Blue Note. Blue Note is a distillery in, I believe, Memphis, Tennessee. And they, they source their stuff. I don't think, I don't think they make their own stuff. But what they have currently is so good. Uh, I bought a bottle randomly. I saw it on the shelf when I was driving to Atlanta. Bought one, shared it with some friends, and then we all went to the liquor store to buy more because it was so good. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's called Blue Note. And then the other one, there's one more I would say. Uh, let me find it. Where is it? Oh, High West. Do you guys say you guys should have High West because it's a Utah whiskey company? Um, have you seen High West out by you? I I believe I believe I have seen a High West bottle. 
You uh, see my West, and it's um, they've got their American Prairie, their Double Rye, um, and their Rendezvous Rye. If you see any of those, I'd buy them. They're great. Okay, American. I like the names too. Those are some yeah, sick names. Really good. And they have cool bottles. I'll grab one. They've got horses on them, on some of them, and then it's like very old west way it looks. So this one here, this is the Rendezvous Rye. There's just a guy riding a horse. It feels like an old school, like 1900s bottle. Mm -hmm. It's on top, and there's kind of like grain in the glass. And they take um, they take rye produced somewhere else, or whiskey in general, and then they rebarrel it themselves and rebrand it and bottle it. And they make these blends that are just absolutely killer. And High West is one that we see a, we see a little bit of uh, in Ohio. And then when my friends see it, they call me. They're like, hey, I've got High West, you know, uh, yippee Kaye, do you want it? Like, yeah, send it to me. <laughs> if it's close to retail, send it. I'll Venmo you. We're all good. Just let me know what the, the, free, the shipping is. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, dude, I'd be ha more than happy to send you any bottles if you've got some out here that you'd want me to to send to you. Have you heard of um, Heritage Distilling Company? It's in Gig Harbor, Washington. I've heard the name, never had any other products. I went up there uh, with a lady on like a little winter getaway and we ended up going to Heritage Distilling, it, Distillery and it was, they weren't bad, man. I think nice. it, I have to check them out. There's, there's a lot of local, there's like East side distilling. There's a lot of like local distilleries around. I don't know um, if they have like a national name or whatnot, but I mean, that's, I mean, whiskey is a lot like music. There's stuff that you're going to find out different kinds of products. You're going to find every single day and you're going to be like, yeah, fuck, how did I not know this existed? Exactly. And that, that's the cool thing. Like I said before, it's a rabbit hole. You can never get to the bottom of there are, there are small companies. There are huge companies. There's in between companies. The flavor profiles are immense and it's just something that once you start with it and you get to love it, you end up with 300 bottles, obviously, like me. and you have an Instagram page where you're telling people, this is good or this sucks, <laughs> uh, you know. But it, it, the most fun part about whiskey is sharing it with friends. It's, you know, I drink by myself once in a while with my wife, but for the most part, I wait till friends come over and they're like, hey, what's good? And I'll, I love showing them a new bottle and saying, hey, you need to try this or you need to try that. And then I get my friends hooked and they're like, I have a one buddy. He's like, only give me whiskeys that I can buy in Ohio because you'll give me something really good and I won't be able to get it. And I'll be pissed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's, <laughs> that's a problem. That's definitely a problem. And there's also people that are like, what, starting their own labels. Like if you tried the proper 12, what's your review on the proper 12? Have you tried that? It's all right. I mean, it's an Irish whiskey. It's, I mean, it's mass produced. I don't know who makes it, it's but cool. I know Conor McGregor, you know, pimp the hell out of it. It's all over the UFC and ESPN. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's not bad uh i would find other bottles for the price point that i love way better yeah here. yeah yeah what about um there's another whiskey i want to ask you but i don't know it's called Warbringer, and it's a uh mesquite smoked southwest bourbon it's made out of o o oxnard california um i don't know if you've i think the uh, ufc fighter is uh josh barnett he made it i mean it's a really it's a really pretty um it's really pretty bottle. That's one on the list of, of mine. I'll, sh I'll shoot you the link real quick. Yeah, it's right there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think that's one that you can you can order. Um, I'd be curious to get your thoughts on that. Oh, he's writing it down. This guy doesn't fuck around. Oh no, I write everything down. I got my I got notes. I got everything ready to go. That's the same <laughs> background though. Like, be prepared for anything you're heading into. Yeah, I'm here and be like, I don't know. Well, I, I don't know whiskey, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I never want to be that guy who's not prepared, but yeah, I that's detailed notes on my whiskey drinking too. And, and like bottles, I'll, I'll try bottles, I'll blind taste test and I'll put them on a coaster and write the name on the bottom and I'll make my wife mix them up. That way I don't know. And there's no bias. And then I'll drink them and go, okay, I like a or B and I'll compare and say, okay, I'm going to try Blanton's, which everyone loves and bends over backwards for versus a small craft company. And I'll see, do I really think Blanton's is better or do I think the small craft company is better? And I try to get the name bias out of it. That's, that's the move. How, how, how many times have you done that experiment and been surprised by it? More often than not. Um, I, I'll put, I put together, 
I try to put together, they've got to be similar in proof, right? You can't drink, and if one's 120 proof and one's 80 proof, you're going to know which one's which, and it kind of gets rid of the bias. Like, it brings the bias back. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, one of my absolute favorites, I did this the other day, and I'm going to put this video out on, on my Instagram. It's just not ready yet. Everyone's telling me, I said Blanton's was overrated, and people started, like, losing their minds. It was my first video that people started being like, this guy's a clown in his parents' basement. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. I love the troll. The troll, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. My, my favorite troll comment real quick. I was doing this. I was just sitting down here one night and I was just holding my cell phone. I didn't have a tripod. I was just holding my phone, you know, like this. So you could see, you know, the whiskey behind me. And my favorite comment of the trolls was typical above the head camera shot looking down. So we can't see how fucking fat you are. <laughs> I'm like, dude, who writes this? Like, <laughs> I'm sitting here like, I don't have anyone else to hold the camera. Like my wife's upstairs and not wanting to be bothered by my bourbon bullshit. So I'm like just holding my camera like this because you can see my whiskey and it's like, it's funny. But I drank Blanton's versus Four Roses single barrel. Mm -hmm. Same retail price point. They're not the same availability anymore. Four Roses is always available in Ohio and Blanton's is not. So the smell test of the nose, Blanton's was way better. The taste test and the finish, Four Roses was way better. And I had no idea until I flipped. I was nervous. I'm like, all right, I love the smell of that one. I love the taste and finish of that one. I'm going to be a real jerk off for saying Blanton's is overrated and making a video about it. And I flipped over the cards and I was like, oh, thank God. Four Roses was better in my mind, you know, without the bias. Yeah. Well, dude, there's, no, there's, I mean, it is what it is. And, and it's your own preference and don't, I mean, never get twisted over the trolls. What I see when I, when I look at you and your content is I see someone that's fucking passionate about what they do. You that's have awesome. a hobby and I love that. I, I want to be around people that are passionate. I want to be around people that are chasing their dreams, you know, and everyone's dream is a little bit different, but the fact you're like, you know what? I am going to go balls deep into whiskey. I love that. I'm a man of extremes as well. Yeah. I've remodeled this basement area three times. But the last time I did it, it was 11 o'clock on a Thursday. I'm stone sober. And I just sit up and I'm like, I hate the way the basement's organized. Fuck it. And I went into demo mode. Like these were all built in cabinets right here. I had a sledgehammer. My wife's like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, it's demo mode, babe. Don't worry about it. And I tore, I put, I moved every bottle and I tore the whole thing out in one night. And I'm like, I don't have a plan yet, but I know I didn't like that. And I'm redoing it. <laughs> <laughs> How did you sell her on this? You just you didn't sell her at all. You just fucking no, went did, for it. Yeah, I just did it. And she's pretty cool. Like the basement area, she's like, do whatever you want. I don't really give a shit. Like it's it's already so much bourbon, we can't make it anything other than what it is. Mm -hmm. But I just went down here and started demoing, and she peeks her head around the corner and is like, What the hell? I'm like, sorry, babe, demo time. And I just ripped out these were all built in, like structurally, I had to worry about stuff. I ripped it all out. Screw it. Ripped it out, redid it, put all the bottles together, and put new shelving in. And this is the fourth iteration of this uh, since I've lived here, which is about six years now. Well, dude, you've got you've got a, you've got the man cave. You've won the game. Oh yeah, yeah. I, and yeah, I'll give you guys a tour. It's a small room, but as oh, you can see, kegerator's over here. As you can oh. see, the kegerator. Okay. I've got an IPA in there currently right now. It's called. Uh, you guys ever heard of Great Lakes? Um, Great Lakes beer? I believe I have, yes. That's a uh, local brewery in Cleveland, and they've got uh, their regular IPA. It's pretty middle of the road. It's like not super hoppy and not super plain, so that's the one IPA I can drink. And then as we tour around the rest of the place, got all my stuff, and then big baseball fans. All my baseballs are over there from Major League Games and come all the way around full circle with the Browns, and then we come all the way back to where the whiskey's at, so... Dude, how long have you been a Browns fan? Unfortunately, my entire life. Dude, that's, I mean, uh, as a Dallas fan, I get it. But, but Baker Mayfield is it. the truth. That's for real. Get the fuck out of no, here. No, no, man. I love Baker. Here's how serious I am about the Browns this year. I tr So when I'm not, you know, working or drinking bourbon, I coach baseball and I train for baseball. And the last six years I've trained on Sunday mornings. Because I'm like, so what? If, I don't care if the Browns are on. I'll watch them when I get home. I don't really need to go anywhere or party or anything. It is what it is. I moved all my training to Saturdays this year. Oh, I want my Sundays to be free. 
So I am hooked currently. And I'm going to pay for it. It's going to hurt real bad when it all blows up in my face. As a lifelong Seahawks fan who has suffered for probably 25 of the 31 years of my life that I have been aware of football, I understand. I understand yeah. entirely. I have a soft spot for like perpetually shitty teams that get good because they get one good draft pick, and I am all for Baker Mayfield. I love the man. I, I hope he... All the pieces are together right now where the Browns could be really, really good. But I'm too hooked right now. I feel uncomfortable, actually. Even the radio guys locally are kind of hooked. And I'm like, all right, this is too much. i got to pump the brakes. Something bad's going to happen. There's, there's number one, like, here's a, a dark horse. Like, what I if I was a Brown? I mean, I don't know. I, you put all your chips in one basket and you try and get Rodgers. You try and lure him away from Green Bay. That's not going to happen, but that would be sick. But he, uh, he has, though. He's not easy to get along with. My dude, you're just salty because your team is trying to burn Dak as like every season that they can. Get out of here. I'm I don't want to talk. I don't I don't watch football anymore because I'm a junkie. And if I if I start watching, I'll get sucked in to an entire season of getting shit on texts from friends about how <laughs> shitty the Dallas I just I don't want to do it. If they win a Super Bowl, I'm retiring. <laughs> People love when Dallas loses, and they love when the Yankees lose. Because I mean, just, just imagine if you were a fan of a decent football team, this wouldn't happen to you. You know, that's probably you could be a fan of a team that no one except the locals give a shit about, like us. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, this just, is true. just go be a go be a Kansas City fan. You know, how do you feel about Dak? On the back off injury, man. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is a hot take. I think that we, I think that we should have just tried to draft someone else. I I don't think he's the guy. I don't think he's going to get us a Super Bowl, and I think we paid him too much money. Wow. Oh, that is a That's super a hot take. Hot. Are there flames that we can put in this? Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I just, I'm, I'm there. I think, I think you're about two years after you should have traded him. We're fucked. We're fucked. Like, I, I, I'm not, you know, I don't know. Zeke needs to have a breakout year. Like, I'm I'm not sure about this whole Mike McCarthy thing. Like, need to I think he's a up. good coach. I just don't know. Like, I, we're, our organization is so dysfunctional. I just, I have no faith. You know the problem in your organization? Don't it starts with the top. Jerry Jones. I, and here's the thing. I have such a love-hate relationship with Jerry Jones. Like, you all I do. Love, I love him as like a, a as like a per, as a businessman, a a person. Dude. Yeah, he's yeah. a character. He's yeah. a fun character. Like when when the COVID draft happened or whatever a few years ago, and he, he's drafting from his yacht. And oh my he, god, he you know he's drafting from his yacht, and pe- he's like, no one had access to him. And he's like, I don't want to be disturbed. So he was gonna go rogue, man. No input from anyone. Just fucking Jerry. He's just the, the money. He's the money dude. You don't take advice from the money dude. You take 100%. the money from the money dude. He's like a super villain. <laughs> That's what he's. He's, turned he's like the dumb super villain who thinks he's brilliant. Meanwhile, that there's other actual super villains that are beating the shit out of him. Like I feel oh, like, yeah. you know, he's he he thinks he's like. Uh, Oh, who, what's the Maras and the uh, the Roonies? He thinks he's up there with them, and he's just a, a total he, idiot. He's not. No way. What do you think about the Browns coach? I love the coach now. Uh, Kevin Stefanski, I'm a huge fan. When they first hired him, it was like, all right, I don't I, I don't like to make snap judgments because how the hell do I know what he's going to do until he does it, you know? Mm-hmm. So he came in. He runs a really tight ship. He's very organized, and it feels good to – you know, like I'm watching it like a business, like in my business, is it if it's organized and tight and you can trust people, you feel good about it. And that's how we feel about the Browns now uh, and the head, the head coach. I think he's really good. Man, this this is very interesting. Like, it's weird that the Browns, I don't, I'm not going to say they're contenders by any means, but they're relevant for the first time in forever. Right? They're at least a they're, wild card. They're they're at least a walker and their team is stacked. I just think you're I just don't have any faith in your quarterback. So all. the perception around here is that we're AFC title contender. Get the fuck yeah, out of here. Absolutely. Dude. The no AFC way. is dog shit except for Kansas City. Kansas City, Buffalo, Cleveland, and then maybe Baltimore. That's Ooh, it. So, so 
the, you're you're in the AFC North, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. AFC North. Oh, dude, no, the Bill, the Patriots, dude. The, no, I don't care. No, oh, absolutely not. Get uh, out of here. Stop it. Stop crazy. it. You have well, to leave. This is my podcast now. Go. Get a rookie quarterback. It's over. I d- I just listen. Old Billy Ball Sack over there up north is he's got a bunch of tr- tricks up his sleeve, and I just I I still have a, an irrational fear of New England. Like I hate I. I mean, you sh- you should, but also like team. they couldn't do anything with Cam Newton. They're not going to do anything with uh, the kid that went to like you know Duke Central College or whatever. You know, he you know he went to uh, Alabama. Oh, so, that's right. Yeah, he wasn't. He was what a backup so, at Alabama. Or he was a starter. No, he was a fucking starter. Was he the starter? Yeah, he won the national championship last uh, year. Well, I mean, but like I could start at quarterback at Alabama and win a national You're, championship. They're that good. Like, and you could slot anybody in, and they would win a national title. You're crazy. I will. I think the Browns are going to be really, really good, and I'm not a homer. I, I've never. I've always loved the Browns, but never really got disappointed. Sunday at three o'clock in Cleveland was cutting the grass time in the fall. Like, okay, second half, they'll cut the grass. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll, I'll watch the end of the game, you know, on DVR later. But this year, it's different. The vibe is different. The town just feels different. Are you shitting me? Like, it is. It, Cleveland is alive right now. Oh. Yeah. I do. It is buzzing right now. It's like you can see, like any 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 guy I talk come across in, in my day to day business. They're like, "Oh, God, how about the Browns? How about the Browns? What about Odell? What about Jarvis? What about?" I'm like, they're going bananas. The, even the radio guys, like the negative radio guys, are like. This, this could be it, guys. This could be the end. The Super Bowl. You guys have definitely have those like early Seahawks vibes right now. Yeah, like I, I, I could see it. Like honestly, I, I think you guys get at least to the divisionals. No, you're insane. I, I yeah, that's no one. Faith. You win one playoff game, bro. Yeah, yeah. We, did that. yeah. we won one playoff game I last mean, who, year. Who, el- who else do you have in your division? You have right the Patriots that are kind of in an off year. You have the Steelers who haven't done anything in the last like right i was gonna say they're just clinging to an aging quarterback for no reason the the bills dude the bills Bills. see it's a it's a two-horse race i'll tell you what though hypothetically if the browns ever won the super bowl you would never see a party like that (laughs) did you you see the Cavs parade and like the videos from that and like Mm -hmm. when the Browns won this would quadruple that. They would have to shut the city down if the Browns won the Super Bowl. I need to. I need oh. to see the Baker Mayfield like just like the J.R. Smith just partying. Like I need that. Oh my god! If they won the Super Bowl, we would build Baker Mayfield a statue as big as our tallest building. <laughs> 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 it would like I'm telling you, it's chaos here right now. Like I'm even getting nervous. I'm like, oh, it's Wednesday. Like <laughs> we, play on, we play on Sunday. Like all right, we gonna have to get the barbecue going, have friends over. The no, it's getting weird, man. It's getting weird. What was it? What was it like actually when LeBron went back and won a championship for Cleveland? I've always, I've never talked to a native Ohioan about Dude, this. That's the greatest, the greatest sports night of my life. It was weird because they were on the road. They're in Oakland, and everybody in Cleveland, I swear to God, everybody went to our downtown. And I live like five minutes from downtown, so we took an Uber over. And we watched it at a bar. Every bar was full around downtown. As soon as they won, the streets filled up with people. So they closed our downtown. Like there were no car, there was no car access, no bridge access, no highway access. The entire downtown was closed because we stormed the streets for seven (laughs) hours. It was three in the morning and people were on top of buses still hanging from light posts. Just, just, just absolute mayhem. That sounds like a national championship in a college town. It was absurd, except we had probably a million people. It was yeah. Crazy. How many burning couches did you have? Did you have the burning couches? No burning couches. Ah, oh, see, that's what makes it so special. So that's 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 like if the Blazers ever won an NBA title, like I would one like probably I'm not gonna I would probably cry like Garrett. <laughs> oh, fucking, fucking I can't believe this happened. Yeah, and if, if Dallas win a win an NBA championship, he's fantastic. What, I, say that say that one more time. I love Damian Lillard. Dude, Lil- Lillard is my boy. I love him too. I wish he was in Cleveland every single day. He probably <laughs> he probably will be somewhere else next season. Shut, shut the fuck up, Demar. I can't listen to you right they now. They didn't Don't. even what? They didn't even consult him to hire the new coach, right? Dude, yes, he, they did. It was his pick. Was it? Yes. Was it? Allegedly. 
Allegedly. Allegedly, because that was kind of a lame pick. TBH. We're gonna keep. We're gonna keep him. They were, happy. They were dumb for going, not going after uh, he, Popovich's assistant. He's a once in a. He's a once like for a small market team having a, a talent like Damian Lillard is insane. We got to do everything to. He's, he is going to, to be the him. NBA's Dan Marino. Oh yeah. I don't think he'll win a championship unless okay, he can no. get on a team with more people. He's not going to do it in Portland. Oh, first off, we have to just stop it. I was being negative. Now I don't want to fucking hear this from you. I'm being <laughs> realistic, my friend. No, I'm, I'm so sorry. The Browns are going to have a better season than the Trailblazers will. That's right. probably How dare you. yeah. How dare, well, listen, I'm going to keep in touch with you, and I I guarantee you, I'll, I'll keep you posted on the whiskey. But also, I'm going to talk shit. Uh, if the Browns lose a game, you're going to hear from me, buddy. <laughs> listen, we're used to it, man. We've got broad shoulders. We're used to all the hate. I'll back you, know? you up. Any touchdown Baker Mayfield has, I'll text him. And so, so, and also, the problem is like, and I'm starting to realize, like, oh, look at look at me. I'm bullying a Browns fan, and people shit on me. I don't like this. Is why I get shit on. You <laughs> reap what you sow. You folks in this life, you reap what you sow. And I am probably sowing a lot of shit talking this football season. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on the show, brother. Um, give, where can people find you? Give out your socials, all that stuff. So uh, the main one is Instagram. It is at Brown Liquor Quest. Um, I'm going to keep putting out my videos of underrated whiskey, overrated whiskey, whiskey you should be drinking, which is basically underrated stuff that I'm just you know, putting out there. And uh, you know, if you've got recommendations, my DMs are filled up. I love to try anything people recommend. I'm going to make a video and I'm going to keep this going. And hopefully uh, we can uh, have a, a drink one day together and we'll do a podcast and get a little after it. Absolutely, man. Well, thanks again. Thanks for listening, folks. Peace. <laughs>